Hello everyone, welcome to Horse Master, the game of Horse Mastery. And this is no normal game of Horse Mastery, oh no. This game is twisted and I love it. It is totally free, it's made in Twine, and you can play it in your browser right now. I'll have a link to where you can check it out for yourself in the description. Also this game comes with no music, so I've provided my own soundtrack, I've added my own soundtrack. Uh, thanks to Kevin McLeod who makes a lot of awesome music that you can use totally for free. I'll have a link to where you can check out his music in the description as well. And I think that's all there is to mention. Let's start mastering a horse. You have trained your whole life for this moment. The first step in becoming a horse master. You gotta buy a horse. Your own horse. Alright, so I have all these different uh, links that I can go to. All these different avenues that I want to explore. You. Sturdy. Calloused. Windblown. Horse master. A master of horses. A coveted position. With tenure. Hard won in reward for excellence in horse mastery across all disciplines. Ooh. I want that. I want that. You gotta buy a horse. Your own horse. The salesman left the factory showroom a few moments ago to talk to the foreman about incorporating some of your specifications into your horse. You are alone with your thoughts, while a scuffed plexi-screen buzzes some sun-faded government propaganda. Hmm, the salesman. Ruddy-cheeked, spittle-fingered, more than a little condescending. What about the propaganda? Rebel groups defeated. Peace restored through strength of morale. President. Life is a succession of disappointments. Labor satisfaction all-time high. A Joanna's baby bump. You heard all of this on the bus to the factory showroom anyway. Your thoughts. That salesman seemed to think you didn't know what you were talking about regarding horses. Your father's legacy. The Dexo... <laughs> Let me make sure I'm pronouncing that right. The Dexo Brimidine, tension skipping your molars against each other, as could give off sparks. What is taking so long already? Dexo Brimidine. Schedule 2 controlled substance. The nightly drip is essential, essentially a job requirement for the mastery of horses, in order to react with an almost unconscious speed to their powerful movements and keep yourself alive for continued mastering of horses. Now that you're striking out on your own, you've upped the dosage to a professional level, hence your obnoxiously clattering teeth all morning. Schedule 2 Controlled Substance Schedule 2 drugs, substances, or chemicals are defined as drugs with a high potential for abuse, less abuse potential than Schedule 1 drugs, with use potentially leading to severe psychological or physical dependence. These drugs are also considered dangerous. Some examples of Schedule 2 drugs are cocaine, methamphetamine, methadone, hydro... Yeah, a lot of things. And of course, dexobrimidine, the horse master's lament. The dosage to a professional level. Though the FDA recommends no more than 6 milliliters administered nightly, the generally accepted wisdom in the professional horse master community is the so-called Perfect 10. 10 milliliters intravenous over its six hour period. As of three days ago, you have graduated yourself to a professional pharmaceutical level. Let's do this. Obnoxiously clattering teeth all morning. Your specifications. The Dexo has met your giddy excitement about purchasing your first horse and is making you second guess everything. Did you remember to ask for everything and in the proper order? Is that why the salesman was so off-put by you? Let's see. You wanted a... Fur Furioso Hellfist, a Europa Trotter, or a Carolina Coffin Breath. You know, I think I want... I want a Carolina Coffin Breath. Sure, the Carolina Coffin Breath. Consistently the choice of all the top international horse masters. Achieving horse mastery with a coffer would mark you as a bold new talent, operating at the highest skill level of all horse masters. 
Their coloration is always a deep black, such as devours all light striking it. They normally stand no taller than 16 hands, but grow elaborate, flared carapaces that intimidate all other breeds. There's no way Dad would ever have purchased a premium breed like a coffer. But he's not here. That's the horse I came for, and that's the horse I asked for. Or, whoa, that's not what I meant. Nope, that's the horse I want. The salesman left a... Oh, this is the same, this is the same. You are waiting on the completion of your custom-bred Carolina Coffin Breath. Sitting in one place for so long on the Dexobrimidine is doing funny things with your sense of time passing slash not passing. For example, you are certain that the salesman will have entered from the far set of double doors. He will have had been chuckling at his private joke and will have... And then... The salesman enters from the far set of double doors. He's chuckling at his private joke and wiping his still wet fingers on his damp tie. Sheena says she's never heard of a Carolina coffin breath with specs like this before. But it's not outside the scope of the theoretical musculature load, he sniffs. Frankly, I've been in the horse business for 18 years, and I think you're just showing off. Grow a horse to these levels? Well, it's like you aren't taking these noble animals seriously. You are not impressed by his lack of vision. There's a reason this man is a horse salesman and not a horse master. Your father despised men like this. He sighs. Well, they're spinning up the nutrient vat right now. Confirmation of your payment will trigger the fertilization process. He slides a chipped glass pay palm invoice to you. It glows on the brushed steel counter, waiting, pregnant. A simple palms play and you'll own the new growth horse that will come to define your career, your own legacy. The glow of the pay palm flares and then fades. The salesman takes the simple pain back from you and clicks his tongue. The two of you watch the clucking propaganda for a few minutes. He never offers you coffee. Clucking propaganda. The loop has updated at least, so there's a brief twinge of novelty. Another win for pasta. It could happen. Shocking patriotism tips the government. Doesn't want you to know. Frederick to Gaiala. Maybe next life. Rebel leaders impotent, study proves. <laughs> Interesting things on the news. The salesman notices your apathy. More like lamestream media, right? He says. There's a short 8-bit fanfare. Play Horsemaster, theme from Horsemaster, to cover up the whirring sound as a rotating cylinder rises from the floor. On top of the cylinder, illuminated from below, is a blue sphere. Your horse isn't blue, of course. The blue comes from the foamy nutrient gravy. Suspended within it, the size of a pinky knuckle, is the slumbering larva of your horse, freshly struck from the egg sac of its queen's papal dome. You will have hefted it, and it will be warm and round in a perfect way. The music ends. You are still staring at the blue sphere on the fully extended column. Even though there are no other customers on the showroom floor, it's clear the salesman is impatient for you to leave. Take your horse. The moment you lift the blue orb, the underlighting flips off and the cylinder drops immediately back into the floor. You heft it, and it is warm and round in a perfect way. It has a fleshy give, a breast almost. No, but rubbery, like a water balloon. You are moving very slowly, knowing what you have sacrificed to hold this little ball, knowing just how fresh into our world this frankfurter of life is. Anyway, you are terrified to drop it, break it. You will clench your hand and the plasticized rubber bladder will rip and the foamy gravy will run down your fist and one scrape of your heel will make this horse a pink streak on the... The salesman is holding the door open for you to leave. Fucking deviant, the salesman mutters as he locks the door behind you. You leave the horse factory, still carrying the blue sphere of your horse, 
with more care than it probably requires. It's late enough that you have to take two buses to get home. You're not dumb. You wrap the sphere in an old sweatshirt and put that old sweatshirt in a plastic bag. You try carrying it like you don't absolutely depend upon its contents to survive. You try to not draw any attention to yourself. The rides are long. Longer still because individual moments are tending to balloon, you notice. You try to not be aware of every slow movement of the bus driver. You try not to be bored both now and in all the future permutations of soon-to-be-now that your Dexode brain can retrieve. Bored Plus. It's late when you get to your building. The tide of awareness receded. Three flights up, a single room. You open the bag, then carefully unfold the sweatshirt. There's a wet spot. You run your hands over the soft, soft orb, back and forth. Nothing. You turn on the bathroom lights and hold it up. No leaks, just condensation. Probably. You fill the bathtub with room temperature water to float the orb in. Water rationing be damned. Even with the faucet on full, this takes almost a half hour. You're so tired that you almost forget to hang your dexobrimidine drip before you nod off on the futon. Day 1. Breed Carolina Coffin Breath. Age 1. Growth Phase Larva. Glamour 3. Uncanny 2. Pep 2. Realness 2. Disc discretion 2. The little blue sphere burst in the tub. Diluted nutrient gravy gives the water a bluish hue. Your little horse uses its cilia to push itself around your bathtub. You'll be showering in the sink until your horse can breathe on its own in a couple days. You have 20 days until the horse master competition. You have three actions left today. I can inject horse with nutrients, feed the horse, electrostim the horse's epidemes, whatever that is, groom the horse, watch television, or hang dexobrimidine drip and try to sleep. Hmm. Alright, let's... let's feed the horse. Many horses are raised to a professional caliber without ever eating solid foods in their entire lives. You probably shouldn't overdo it, but might give your horse the edge in realness it needs to win. Hmm. Okay, makes it more... real. That's good. I could just straight up inject it. But no. Let's electrostim it. The fans hum as the electrostim powers up. To which end do you attach the electro pads? Dorsal or ventral? Dorsal, of course. You clip the pads to the dorsal side of your horse. There's a flash of current, some jitters, and you remember that this doesn't hurt the horse, so don't think about it, okay? Ah, it gives it more pep and uncanny. Hmm. Well, I'd like to do more to it, but of course, I need my dexobrimidine. You listen and imagine you can hear your horse splishing in the tub. You sleep. Your dream is a dial tone that lasts all night. Day 2. You're up before dawn to check the readouts from the first day. Those numbers up above are right where they should be on an overall efficiency curve. You dip your hand in the tub to do a physical check on your horse. No bifida, no unsealed clefts. The nutrient gravy makes your hand smell like artificial banana flavoring. You have 19 days until the Horsemaster competition. Three actions left today. Let's groom it. You shoplifted a selection of shampoos and conditioners to help with grooming. Which do you apply this time? Grandeur. Grandeur has a deep caramel musk. Your horse could be equally at home in the boardroom or in the limousine. More glamour and more discretion. And rinse. Hmm. 
injected. You slide the needle into the main nerve bundle of your horse's essential nervous system. It's a full cocktail of essential vitamins, nutrients, stimulants, and selective serotonin ruptic inhibitors. You got a full set of these injections from the pharmacist who provided the liberal allotments of dexobrimidine. Best not to dwell on how much it costs. Plus to discretion and uncanny. Let's hang my drip. Tomorrow's a big day. So far, your plan is working. You wake up to find your horse walking clumsy circles on the cold bathroom tile. It still flexes its gill flaps, but there's so much... But there's so much a decoration as it's now breathing through actual lungs of a sort. The stale nutrient bath makes your bathroom pungent. You drain the tub. Your little horse has lived through the larval phase. This is a great sign. You're finally confident enough to name it. You cup the tiny pupil horse in both hands and you give it a name with a whisper. Demon spawn is what they'll call you. Demon spawn, a fine name. Day three. Demon spawn the Carolina coffin breath. All right, it's a pupa. Demon spawn is now a pupa. It skitters around your carpet, pouncing on dust bunnies. It naps a lot, puffing tiny snores out of its spiracles. You have 18 days until the horse master competition. Three actions remain. Hmm. Let's inject it. There we go. Let's groom it. This time, let's try Revelry. Revelry is the shampoo that used to come with marshmallows floating in it when you were a kid. It makes the sensitive skin around your fingernails burn as you work it into your horse's mane. More glamour and pep. And rinse. Alright, get my nightly hit of dexobrimidine and go to sleep. Demon spawn climbs on your chest to sleep. It has to knock this off because soon it will be it will be big enough to crush you if it tries this trick. Just for tonight, though. Day four. Demon spawn has a budding carapace on its head and you can already see small whorls that will eventually form its unique individual patterning, patterning like a human fingerprint. It practice rams against your ankle every spare moment. You have 17 days until the horse master competition. Let's electro stim it. This time, ventral. There's a short sizzling sound and a copper smell to the air. The horse is stimulated. Let's inject it. Hang my decks of remedying and go to sleep. Another restless half sleep. Demon Spawn seems excited, too. You're both excited, but probably for different reasons. The thing about horse mastering is that once you get the hang of the basic physical tasks involved, it's basically just a giant game of spreadsheet management. The skill becomes chaining the right actions in order to maximize your efficiency and produce the best horse. Horse mastery means exploiting every action and every horse statistic. So you got all the maximum combos off a horse mastery internet forum and coded a series of macros to just let your computer apply your actions for you. And now Demon Spawn is finally old enough to try it out. Day 5. Demon Spawn is the size of a smallish dog but is surprisingly heavy. There are hundreds of pounds of potential there are hundreds of pounds of potential muscle coils inside it, waiting to knit and grow. 16 days until the competition. Ooh. Run maximum efficiency horse stat growth macro. 
Mm. It's tempting. It's tempting, but no. I want to do it on my own. Alright. So my horse isn't real enough. So let's feed it. Feed it normal food. There we go. And... I wonder what watch television does. I want to find out. Day 5. Revenge on Henry Ford. Horse sales outstrip cars for third year. New study reveals what your teens aren't telling you. Kidnapping nightmare stretches into 140th day. Weekend box office numbers show comedies aren't just for kids anymore. Alright, dexorimidine and off to sleep. You listen to Demon Spawn breathe for a while and your mind drifts off. Then, it's just morning all over again. Until today, Demon Spawn has excreted all waste through its colicidic pores. Now, though, it's grunting and sitting constantly, meaning it wants to excrete its first bowel movement, but can't fully expand and contract its anus without help. In the wild, the mother can easily do this with one of her special grooming tentilla. You, however, must do careful work with a cotton swab and pinky finger until the fecal head begins to emerge. Congratulations! You have 15 days until the Horsemaster competition. Hmm. How are we looking on stats? It's surprisingly discretionary. Let's inject it. And it needs more pep. How do I give you pep? Electrostim? Dorsal? Yeah, there we go. Pep. Dexo Brimidine and off to sleep. You lie awake for hours. Absolutely certain this was a mistake. You are no horse master. Day 7. You began Demon Spawn's operant conditioning a few days ago in subtle ways. But today you begin work with the Silver Whistle. Good behavior earns a pleasing melody and a treat. Bad behavior? A low tone in the withholding of eye contact. 14 days until the competition. Needs more glamour. That'd be groom. Grandeur. Glamour and discretion. And it needs more realness. Let's feed it. Dexobrimidine and off to sleep. You run your hand across Demon Spawn's sleeping flank. This has been a hard day. You think about how these rich fuckers will never see you two coming. Your dream is something about snow. Day 8. Thanks to the Dexobrimidine, you were able to move so fast that you only dislocate your thumb, stopping Demon Spawn's powerful hooves from caving in your skull. You play a low tone and wrap the thumb in tape. You have 13 days until the Horse Master competition. Ah, it's still not real enough. It needs to be more real. More. Here we go. Let's inject it. And Dexobrimidine, we're off to sleep. The swelling hasn't gone down on your thumb. The nail is cracked. You sleep hard, clutching the bandaged hand to your chest. Day 9. You discover Demon Spawn shat on your warm coat in the night. You play a low tone on the whistle. Enzymes in the horse waste melted much of the lining, and the stench takes hours to dissipate. You won't need a winter coat when you're a horse master. You'll never be cold again. Twelve days until the competition. Let's electrostim. A ventral. Hmm. 
needs more glamour to groom it. Let's try Shrike. Shrike smells just like soap. It is the shampoo and conditioner combination of realness. When you are a horse master, you will never ever use Shrike on yourself again. And rinse. Takes a remedy and off to sleep. You're developing a facial tick, almost like someone is twisting your left cheek. You try to smooth it out and hold it flat like a sheet on a bed. For some reason, this makes you start remembering every person you've ever let down. The list is terrible, even before it is comprehensive. But then, sleep. Day 10. You wake up early to vomit a little. It's muddy gray. Demon Spawn doesn't wake up. You have sleep's awful certainty that your horse has died in the night. Then you see its chest rise and fall again. You have 11 days until the competition. Hmm. Needs more pep. Let's electrostim you. There we go. Needs more realness. I think I've gotten realness from electrostim before. Let's try ventral. Yeah, realness and pep. Dexobrimidine. You've eaten plain foods all day, and you and you kept everything down. Between that and Demon Spawn responding to its name, just once. It's been a day full of accomplishments. Day 11. Demon Spawn is already so large and hardly halfway grown. It's unclear how large a horse would live and grow if they weren't raised for competition. You have 10 days until the co competition. Mm, more glamour. Let's groom it. One grammar. That's not enough. More. More groom. Still not enough, but it's something. Exobrimidine. Brimid Brimidrine? Whatever it was. Would, you, would your father even recognize what you've become? Did he want this for you? Did he ever notice you enough to want something for you? What good are horses? Day 12. You realize your apartment is covered in the coarse hairs that Demon Spawn keeps growing and shedding. The hair clings to itself like Velcro and stays warm hours after leaving the follicle. You gather together almost two garbage bags of hair puffs while Demon Spawn watches. You have nine days until the competition. Hmm. Discretion is certainly no issue. I need realness and glamour. Try grooming. Let's try revelry. Glamour too. Ooh. Nice. Okay, realness. Electrostim ventral. Yeah, there we go. Off to sleep. In any project, there's always a trough of enthusiasm. There is a lull. This lull is where doubts hunt you with the weapons of your own creation. Tonight, doubt tells you that even if Demon Spawn is perfect, they will not let you win. You are not one of them. Given a choice, they will always choose themselves. Day 13. When it flexes, the skin of Demon Spawn's haunches becomes translucent. You can see wet, dark red musculature, taut, ready. You could whistle that pleasing melody all day in gratitude. You have eight days until the competition. Hmm. Pep and discretion are good. I need realness, uncanny, and glamour. Let's inject it. Now I need glamour and realness. Electrostim ventral. Well, more pep and realness, okay. Off to bed. No food tasted good today. The utensils tasted like burning tires. But the food provided no sensation. A molar is loose. Day 14. First thing in the morning, there is a knock on the door and you do not know what to do. So you hide. The knock repeats and you clamp your hands over Demon Spawn's snout. 
and will it not to make noise and try not to breathe yourself, even though you are in all-consuming panic. Whoever it was leaves, so okay. You have seven days until the competition. Glamour and r uncanny and realness. Let's groom you. Revelry. There we go. Uncanny. How do you get uncanny? I don't remember. Is it the injection? Oh, I didn't look. Oh, I forgot to look at it. Anyway, off to sleep. You are very proud of Demon Spawn this day. You are afraid that it will be taken from you now. That's how proud you are. When you are proud of what you have done, God will hurt you to remind you that it was actually God who did it. You can feel that God would like to take Demon Spawn away from you. God playing a low tone on a whistle the length of a battleship and then taking his eye contact away forever. It is what you deserve. Day 15. You lose yourself in running your fingers through Demon Spawn's mane. Mane. Mane is a misnomer. The bundle of long prehensile tentilla emerging from behind the carapace that is called the mane was a surprise byproduct from the fourth evolutionary improvement on the foundational horse formula, or FHF. You are aware of just the sunlight, your breathing, and the gentle pull of the mane on your fingers. You have six days until the Horsemaster competition. Hmm. Needs more realness. Let's go with Electro Stim Ventral. Pep and realness. Alright. Let's go with Groom Grandeur. Glamour and Discretion. Okay. And off to sleep. You did not cry once today. Even if you almost wanted to. So maybe you're probably getting the hang of the Dexo Brimidine? The dream of flesh colored fish. Day 16. Whoa. You were evicted. You and Demon Spawn are in an alley behind a falling, a failing, uh, a failing strip mall. You are exposed. Evicted? Let's go back. Keys in the lock. Landlord. Deputized military officers. Notice on orange papers. Previously, your landlord was casual regarding rent and punctuality. You were certain you could ignore it until you won. Nope. DMOs and everything. Technically, this is an animal-free building. They seized your Dexobrimidine bags from the fridge to sell to other desperates like yourself. One of the DMOs motions like he will shoot demon spawn. And the landlord begs him not to ruin the flooring. Hot shame tears. You grab a half-packed garbage bag and whistle for Demon Spawn to follow before it goes worse. Your former landlord says he'll be rooting for you at the competition. You only have five days until the Horsemaster competition. You spent all of your actions trying to find food today and still have to go hungry. Find food today. You did find some old hamburger buns, but you fed them to Demon Spawn. Luckily, it had eaten solid foods before. You probably didn't need to eat. Lately, you've had trouble keeping food down. You are ashamed of how bad you fucked up, but have to try to sleep, or you'll be too tired to try to find food tomorrow. Night 16. There's enough Dexy still in your bloodstream that you wind up not really sleeping. Demon Spawn does not understand why it is not at home. Every noise spooks it, and it bleats and whinnies no matter how hard you try to calm it. You make it a bed of a sort on some garbage bags and cover it with more. This is the wrong neighborhood to have a horse at night. You just wish there was some way to communicate to Demon Spawn that this is only a temporary setback. You've made it this far. You just have to make it a few more days. Day 17. You are so tired. Without a safe place to sleep and food to eat, You'll only receive two actions per day. 
The free library is across town and will take most of the day to visit. Scavenging food and usable materials can also take a full day. You just have to keep you and Demon Spawn alive four more days until the Horsemaster competition. You have two actions left today. Alright, scavenge for edible waste products. Ew. Walk to the library to use a public computer to check stats. Shoplift food. Hose bath. Continue operant conditioning on horse or try to sleep. Hmm. Okay, okay. Let's let's scavenge. Demon Spawn smashes the lock on a dumpster easily. The whole thing tips sideways. You grab the first bags that spill out and run from the commotion, laughing. There's good stuff here. Mostly leftovers from last night's dinner service. No one chases you. You are alive and free. You and Demon Spawn have a little food. How do you want to divvy it up? Let's divide it between both of us. You both have to eat if you're to have any chance of surviving the Horsemaster competition. You set the, the food units and demon spawn at one end of the alley, and run to eat your own at the other while it is distracted. You eat barehanded, and your hands get sticky. Let's, uh, let's continue operant conditioning. You may be homeless, exhausted, and starving. But Demon Spawn's obedience will be fundamentally important in the Horsemaster competition. And so you drill for hours. The whistle, the two tones. You train until you are too sluggish and disoriented to continue. You've done all you can today. Try to sleep. The Dexy has worn off enough that you start trembling and don't sleep and don't stop all night long. Demon Spawn gets jostled awake and spends most of the night pacing around you in a circle. It just keeps growing. It would have trouble standing in your old apartment now. You'll both be okay. Day 18. You have a headache that stretches over your whole body. You could really, really use some dexobrimidine, but absolutely no one is going to give you any. Luckily, Demon Spawn is basically raised by this point. You just have to keep you and Demon Spawn alive three more days until the Horsemaster competition. Okay, okay. Let's do food again. You are pulling open bags behind the bakery when a woman working inside brings you an entire bag of day-old bagels and a small coffee. You are nearly overwhelmed. Then she tells you you... Then she tells you what the problem is with people like you. You have to just keep nodding and you gather your horse and you go. How do you want to divvy it up? Divide it. Mm-hmm. And let's give Demon Spawn, let's give Little Demon Spawn, well, not little anymore. Let's give Big Demon Spawn a, a bath. There's a hose behind the Thai cheeseburger place. You spray Demon Spawn down, and the cold water causes it to rear up and tremble. You keep up and dodge to avoid its powerful hooves until it calms into the water temperature. A small river of accumulated grime runs off of it. Its shell gleams in the sun. Good, clean horse. Try to sleep. Your eyes water. Your nose runs. Horses used to be different. Horse mastering used to be different. Your father was sure he would be in the last generation. He, your father was sure he would be in the last generation to horse master. Well, let me try that again. Your father was sure he would be in the last generation to master horses. But these things persist. If it could speak, would Demon Spawn think of you as a friend? Think of what you've lived through together. Day 19. It's almost impossible to hide Demon Spawn anymore. If you needed to ride it, safety note, never ride a horse. You would now need a ladder to get on top of it. What's more, it now oxidizes luciferins, luciferins, causing the distinct horse steaming bioluminescence 
that is quite unsettling to humans on a primal level, and makes it like sleeping directly under an extremely muscular streetlight slash blast furnace. You just have to keep you and Demon Spawn alive two more days. Let's get food. Mm-hmm. Divvy it up. And let's continue operant conditioning on horse. Try to sleep. You're exhausted, but there's no time to sleep tonight. To stand any chance of success in the Horsemaster competition, you'll have to be dressed to overwhelm. You're still wearing the same pajamas you were evicted in. Your unfinished handmade competition gown was lost in your haste to flee your apartment. The best you can hope for now is a successful... Kyo cheer I don't know what that word is. Heist. The few high-end boutiques that still exist in physical storefronts keep nightclub hours. No one who can afford to shop there is much awake during daylight hours. Those who can afford it are much more unthinking at spending. Thousands of dollars. Oh, are much more unthinking at spending thousands of dollars on a single unmatched sandal at 3 a.m. You parade Demon Spawn uncovered down the street for the first time. Cars must swerve around it. Its carapace glows. Its eyes glow. Here is a madness given form that is mostly under your control. The threat is implied and inferred. You hold up your hand and Demon Spawn stops. Retail experience coordinators lay elaborate gowns, shoes, headdresses, buckles, suspenders, chaps, Girdles at your dirty feet in silent tribute. The night wealthy are transfixed. You gather what you will and click your tongue. You and Demon Spawn melt the divots in the street. Day 20. You've made it this far, just a little further. The body is bad at distinguishing between the excitement of joy and the excitement of fear. You get chills that even Demon Spawn can't warm. You keep losing the thread of your thoughts and then pulling hairs from your nose or scalp as you try to work your way around to remembering. And then there is blood sometimes. If you can score some dexo remedine at the Horsemaster competition, your heart might not explode. You just have to keep you and Demon Spawn alive one more day. Alright. Well, food again. We need to eat. Divide it between us. And this is the last day before the competition, so I want Demon Spawn to look beautiful. So I'm going to give you a bath again. Try to sleep. You shower under the hose after all the businesses close. The rats regard you from a fearful distance. Morning means the Horsemaster competition. Tomorrow you'll at least have a hotel room. Then you'll win and never worry again. Horsemaster competition. You and Demon Spawn start walking before dawn and arrive at the Comfort Inn West a little before nine. It is a humid morning and mist comes up off the grounds. The sprinklers hiss to life and Demon Spawn is startled for a second. There are banners welcoming the 86th Annual Southwestern Region Horsemaster Championship Gala on every light post for miles around. You realize your posture is stooping forward and remind yourself you need to focus on standing up straight for the judges. You lead Demon Spawn into the registration line. Uh, <laughs> these names. Aethel Wolf, Chablis, Sumchualisk. I don't know. All the major houses will be present for the competition itself. But this early are only represented by sponsorship signs on the lawn. You size up other horses in line, trying to guess at house affiliation, looking for exotic breeds from factories in the far west. One is barely a fowl in the joint between its actual carapace and a papier... what? I don't even know what that is. Extension is an embarrassment that will fool no one. You see a Hellfist that's so malnourished, it can barely stand in the humidity and gives off no glow. 
you see a gorgeous Europa that hasn't been fully broken by conditioning, writhing and flexing, and no, it won't pass the preliminary rounds. This is the first time Demon Spawn has been around so many of its kind. It wants to ram into the other horses. It wants to dominate them. But it won't do so without your command. You pick up your tote bag, name badge, and lanyard from a counter. The tote bag is filled with advertisements for luxury brands that want you to remember them fondly if you should win. There is a banana inside, and you eat it. You also eat the two granola bars, never setting the bag down. Your loose molar comes free, as does the one next to it. You spit a mix of granola, raisins, blood, and enamel into your palm, and try to be nonchalant. What's funny is, it doesn't even hurt. What's funnier still is trying to close your hand in a fist around the teeth because your fingers don't cooperate for a long time. Preliminary Screening You lead Demon Spawn to the preliminary screening area. Deputized military officers with powerful rifles and laser blades surround this area. Full-grown horses are incredibly valuable if stolen, and incredibly dangerous if loose, so the DMOs must protect smooth order in all directions. A convention staffer hands you ports to plug into Demon Spawn. Its stats blink up on a screen-burned laptop. All right. Demon Spawn, Carolina Coffin Breath, age 21, growth phase, adult. Glamour 45, Uncanny 33, Pep 53, Realness 44, Discretion 50. Overall rating, 45. Whew, nice numbers, the staffer says. Demon Spawn passed the preliminary judging round. Many horses don't, and interns are dragging behind these those malformed corpses to the bonfire pit. The staffer who checked in Demon Spawn shakes your hand and welcomes you as an official competitor with a bottle of ice water. Your badge number is recorded, and you ask about getting a refill of your dexobrimidine prescription. You know how crazy travel is, you say. You are still wearing the clothes you were evicted in, and you've been sleeping in horse piss soaked garbage for a week. Yet, it's not a problem. The hotel medical staff is amply prepared for the competition, and you won't be the only rib thin hopeful to have misplaced a supply. Then, porters lead Demon Spawn to the stables. They chain it down with heavy iron links, but your hand on its face is enough to calm it, mostly. This will be the first time you are apart for more than a few minutes since it was born. You have to clean up for the opening gala and cotillion. Also, a mini fridge full of chilled dexobrimidine. Hotel room. You don't sleep, you don't unpack, you don't shower. You just lick the port on your forearm and hang the dexy bag on the rod in the closet. And it is an ice cold river that numbs your arm and then blooms your whole face. You are blessed. For the first time in days, you are present in the way that only people on Dexobrimidine are present. The current moment swells up and up, and you see how you might, you just might pull this off, but are stuck tethered to this bag of poison hanging from the closet. You have plans. You have ideas about how you will carefully modify your gown just so. You can see a dozen more things you should have done with and for Demon Spawn. First thing when you win, you'll get clean. The drip you've waited for for days can't finish soon enough. You have so much left to do. Grand Staircase You feel the best you felt in weeks. You run your tongue over your front teeth to make sure none of them will come loose when it comes time for you to smile at the cameras. You line up and meet your escort. You can hear the introduction of a state senator and the end of his remarks. Of course the current administration, he pauses to chuckle, would have you believe our ways, the, tradi the traditional ways, mind you, are barbaric. Well, what is more barbaric? The nobility of the majestic horse or the tyranny of socialism? You and the three remaining and the three remaining potential horse master candidates are escorted by DMOs in traditional dress uniforms and white gloves down the palatial grand staircase to your waiting horses. 
The silver whistle around your neck gleams in the camera light. You smile as though joy is your only hobby. Your crew cut escort wilt in the presence of your massive gleaming horse. Demon spawn has been carefully cleaned and detailed in your hours apart. In the sight of the accumulated judges and television cameras, you pledge to treat Demon Spawn with the full dignity of its species and according to all the customs of your people. The Promenade. The first event is simple. Each candidate's horse must circle. Each candidate's horse must circle the judging grounds three times. One walk, one trot, one canter. The horse master candidate may only communicate using whistles and clicks. On the final pass of each horse, his vital statistics are read aloud and the horse must kneel in each of the cardinal directions, symbolizing the submission of all horses under the unified nations of men. It's the sort of event that has no drama because any horse that couldn't easily pass this event never makes it by the preliminary screening rounds anymore. This event is almost as boring for Demon Spawn as it is for you. It continues to exist because it's relatively low risk and allows spectators both here and at home to begin investing themselves in individual candidates before the real meat of the thing. Demon Spawn passes the walk and the trot with no trouble. On the canter, you can see it wants to go faster. There's a shocking moment where it breaks rhythm, but it passes. You've never really let it run at a full speed, and there's so much power ready to do so, even now. You can control it, though, and it kneels in all four directions. The knee divots left behind are within the half-degree margin of error. The crowd erupts. The judges give you a nine. Easy. Dressage. For the second event, you must prove your total mastery of Demon Spawn's most primal instincts. You are presented with a small knife. With one swift movement, you sever your left pinky finger. You place the finger in front of Demon Spawn and wait. The blood and meat attracts Demon Spawn, but at the moment it bends to eat the finger. You blow the silver whistle for it to halt. And with a simple gesture, Demon Spawn performs the trick you have practiced hundreds of times. It drops the uneaten finger into your waiting palm. The nine finger judges applaud. Cotillion. For the final event, there can be no tricks. Biology and development have chosen the true winner long before tonight. All that remains is to reveal. It is the purest expression of horse development and mastery. You will go first. You whistle for Demon Spawn. It stands. You regard each other with total certainty. Demon Spawn never whinnies or screams when, you when your small knife severs its main nervous bundle. This is an excellent sign, judging wise. A thin pink line of drool drips from Demon Spawn's slack lips. Its eyes no longer focus. You begin to carefully cut away its carapace to expose the milky nerve disc below. You remove the disc and set it on a small plate held by a nearby attendant. He places a lid on the plate and carries it to the judging platform. A giant video screen shows the overhead view of the plate. There is a moment of maximum suspense when the lid is removed. The five purple-red nerves form a perfect equilateral star pattern across the disc. The audience erupts. The smiling judges must keep up appearances, so they shout for silence. The measuring equipment is laid out to check depth and thickness, but it's all theater. Anyone with eyes can see you've won. You even get to shake hands with a state senator. You made it. You are a horse master. You never have to, and never can, work again. The world is sick and ugly, but at least you made it through okay. You did exactly what was expected of you. Good for you, the life your father always wanted. Now you might even ask what kind of life you would have wanted, but it is too late to ever want again.
end. This is the end of Horse Master. Coming soon, Horse Master 2, Centaur Master. Thank you for playing. Roll credits. <laughs> Holy shit. Wow. That's, uh... I mean, I knew this game was messed up because I played it for a couple of minutes and heard a bit about it, but oh my god. Wow. That was really, really, really good. The, the quality of the writing, which of course, being the kind of game it is, is, well, pretty much everything, is exceptional. The, just the descriptions of everything going on were so disgustingly detailed and just revolting. Just the way everything was just messed up, sometimes in super obvious ways, but also in more subtle ways. Like how there's subtle hints throughout the entire story about how incredibly messed up the entire world is. You know, because I'm playing this and I'm thinking, is this just set in our world, but there happens to be... There happens to be these bizarre horses that apparently glow and have carapaces and... <laughs> yeah, like, they're not normal horses by any means. Is that the only difference, but it's just like our normal world? But no, it's not. There's little hints about other things going on. Just enough to make you think... Uh, just enough to make me think that there's something... Like, uh, just enough to get my imagination going. As to... What horrors await me out there. Like, what's wrong with the world? And that's aside from how horrible... What is happening... Around me is. My horse and what I'm doing to it and what I'm making and... Just all of that. But then there's the hints of the outside stuff, which are also really creepy. I thought that was a really nice touch. And I wonder... Uh, one of the actions you could do is read the paper. What if you, what if you like, kept reading the paper? Or kept watching the news or whatever it was, where you learn more about the world? What if you kept doing that as one of your actions? Would something, would you learn something important? Because the end of the game said you did exactly what was expected of you. That makes me think maybe there's another way through, where you don't. Where you don't do what's expected of you. Can you have a different life? One where you're not a horse master? What if you neglected your horse and just focused on yourself? What if you didn't take the drug? Could you break the habit? I wonder. I don't know. But dear God, that was well written. Really, really well written. Just disturbing, disturbing and disgusting in all of the right ways. I'm trying to think of what else to say about it. I, I really want to talk more about the little details that made me think something was messed up with the world. Because I, I really, really like that element. It's... It's really going above and beyond what I would even expect. If it didn't... If it didn't have that whatsoever and it just focused on what was happening with you and your horse... I mean, that alone is, is okay. It would be... It'd probably be really good. But it really takes it to the next level to have those details. It makes me feel like... It makes me feel more like this is a real world that... That I was in. Like, there's all these other things happening that are that are bigger than me, and I don't understand them. I don't know exactly what's happening, but I just know little... It just, I know just enough to know that there's something really, really wrong with the world. <laughs> just I'm just thinking back to all these small details, like the fact that the horses seem to want to eat flesh. There's the test where you, s where you sever your own pinky. <laughs> and all the judges are missing a finger as well. 
you sever your own pinky. And the horse is attracted to flesh, so they're... They apparently like eating human flesh, which is really disturbing. And the test is to see whether you can control them and stop them. I mean, all these different types of horses. They're fucked up. They're, what the hell are they? They're just... They don't seem like horses. Much at all. They seem more like, I don't know, demons or something. Which I suppose makes my name of Demon Spawn for my horse rather appropriate. And all of the, uh... <laughs> and the fact that people were, uh... Like when you're in the city, and you're walking around looking for, I think you're looking for clothes, and a bunch of people pay tribute to you, or like bow at your feet and give you stuff, because of your massive horse. So strange. I'm trying to imagine what happened in the world to lead to to lead to this. You know what's been happening to re to create this sort of a environment. And the fact that and the fact that horse mastery is so big of a thing that the horses are actually worth massive amounts of money to the point where they'd actually protect them with armed people. And they're conscientious of the fact that if they're, if the horses were to escape, they would cause massive amounts of damage. They know they're dangerous. And yet, for some reason, they still allow it. It's one of the creepiest games I've ever played. It's, um... The effectiveness of the creepiness really... Is, is pretty astounding because it's, it's both creepy in a very in a very in your face kind of literal way where you're directly dealing with your horse and it's describing like gelatinous I don't know nutrient and just this thing like <laughs> when it's young it's just pulling itself around with weird body parts I don't even remember the name of it whatever it was pulling itself around with and just the you know the descriptions of it developing and all those things those are really creepy, but then there's also the more subtle stuff that just makes you think, oh, something's wrong. Something's really wrong with everything. Like, something's wrong with everything in the game. The horses, you, the drug you're taking, the the world, just something's wrong everywhere. It's really unnerving. And I really enjoyed it. Alright, well, I hope everyone enjoyed my playthrough of... Horse Master. And again, it's totally free, so feel free to play it on your own and become your own Horse Master. Go and do it. You'll have a you'll have a fun time, guaranteed.